Ye Guan Kim, The Myth of Non-Reductive Materialism from 1989. A very important article in the field of metaphysics and the subfield of philosophy of mind. Materialism, or physicalism, is the theory that all is matter, or that everything is made of matter. Everything is physical. Now, in the philosophy of mind, three of the questions we need to answer are, one, is materialism correct? Two, is there a mind to be explained? Or are there mental phenomena or mental properties which have to be explained? And third, can the mind be reduced to the brain? That is, is every mental phenomenon which needs to be explained, or every mental property, a physical property? Now, interestingly, there have been some metaphysicians who tried to answer no to the third question, but yes to the first two. For example, there are the emergentists, who say that mental properties emerge from physical properties, but are not themselves physical properties. They emerge from physical properties without being physical properties. But Kim doesn't really talk about them in this article. There are others, though, and they are more the target of Kim in this particular article, who talk about supervenience, but without reductionism. And what that means is they say that the mind supervenes on the brain, but they say that mental properties are not the same as physical properties. And what Kim argues in this article is that this strategy just won't work. On the one hand, if a materialist says that the mind depends completely on the brain, then he ought to admit that every mental property is caused by purely physical causes and can be explained in purely physical terms. But if he does this, then he might as well just admit that what he's really reaching for is a reductive materialism. On the other hand, if a materialist says that mental properties really cannot be explained in purely physical terms, or that perhaps they do, have, uh, do not have purely physical causes that we can, at least in theory, trace, then he's not really reaching for a materialism of the mind. Maybe he has the eliminativist view, and that's the theory that denies the existence of these mental properties. Or maybe he's not really a materialist after all. So this is the dilemma. Kim sets up for non-reductive materialism, but he doesn't make it into a formal argument. His formal argument is a little more uh, specific, and the formal argument appears in part five of the article. In the former parts of the article, he uh, explains why several different versions of non-reductive materialism all fail. They either turn out to not be real materialisms, or they turn out to be eliminativisms, or uh, they turn out to be reductive after all. Now, when he makes his direct argument, he focuses on causality. He makes this argument in part five, and he says, mental events which have an effect of some sort must, if materialism is true, themselves have purely physical causes and purely reducible causes, causes that can be explained in purely materialistic terms. Now, that's uh, the argument he makes in part five. Now, let me uh, make three observations. If I understand the situation correctly, Kim, later, not in 1989, but sometime later, came to the conclusion that there are some mental properties which are not reducible. And he still says, however, that he is a materialist, or something near enough. But don't his principles rule this out? If these mental properties are not physical properties, and if they cannot be explained in purely physical terms, or if they do not have traceable physical causes, shouldn't Kim just admit that he's not really a materialist, or even something near enough? Well, that's a question for another time. It may be another video. But let's keep one thing straight for now. Kim's direct argument relies on the effects of mental events, and if a mental event does not have any effects, then his argument does not apply. You might be able to construct a dilemma based on uh, the whole thrust of the article, but his direct argument will not apply. Because the non-physical mental properties he talks about are the ones that don't have any effects. They're just there, but they don't affect the world in any way. So maybe another argument, not his direct one, but another one could be built out of the principles he's articulated. If so, then early Kim made it easy to refute later Kim. Maybe, but that's a question for another day, maybe for another YouTube video. But at any rate, his direct argument from this article does not seem to have any weight against his later position.